Performed live for the World Cafe, you just heard Keep Your Wheels Straight, a song that grabbed me right away from Laura Jane Grace's new album, Hole in My Head. I'm Raina Duras. Laura Jane Grace is my guest today. Welcome back to the World Cafe. Thank you for having me. And we are in person this time. Last time we were on Zoom. We are. It's much better to be in person. So much better. <laughs> it was back when we, uh, no one could go anywhere. And I know that, that uh, it was a lonely Christmas kind of during that time that you wrote that song that we just heard. You had COVID. You were boarding up the windows hibernating, listening to Elliot Smith, it sounds like, from the lyrics of that song. I was. All <laughs> great things to do for your mental health. Um, <laughs> but you, you do have that line in there, keeping the faith, everything will be okay. And now here we are. Here we are. And I know you've had a lot going on in the last little while. Yeah. You got married. Paris Campbell, your wife, was singing backgrounds on the song that we just heard. You also moved into a new house. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> How are you feeling? How's everything going? Um, it feels good. I mean, like, it's awesome to be on the road now. Moving is stressful, definitely. Boxes and things like that. But, I mean, all, all good problems, champagne problems, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, past couple months have just been, like, pretty wild. Um, yeah. there's a, there was a lot in there, too, that you left out as far as, like, went to Greece and uh, played some shows in Greece, uh, got in a car accident. Oh, my God. Um, and, um, yeah, a bunch of stuff. When getting in a car accident is like a footnote detail of all the things that have <laughs> happened to you, then you know a lot is happening. Yes, yeah. You seem like the, the kind of person who's always writing and you're always documenting and, and listening to these songs. Sometimes it is kind of like listening to a journal entries in a way. How does it feel right now when you have all of this new stuff happening to go back and play these songs live and talk about them and revisit them? Um, I mean, in ways like, the kind of the delay that happened between when this record was recorded and when it came out, because it was recorded in February of 2023, and it's obviously come out in February of 2024. Having that little bit of delay has been both equally frustrating um, and then also kind of a blessing in that way, because like I have a really hard time understanding like what I've written or like, you know, immediately like and you're often tasked with that right out the gates of yeah. like, well, what does that song mean? And you're like, I don't know. I just wrote it. It felt good, you know. So having like a year in between, does it give you at least a little bit of perspective to look back and be like, OK, well, that's where my headspace was because you're a little detached from it, you know. So that helps a little bit, but it feels awesome to be out like sharing the songs with people and especially to be playing shows and have people like sing along because now they know the songs and, and that's cool. 
Yeah. I'm talking to Laura Jane Grace. The new album is called Hole in My Head. Uh, and there, and there's so much to talk about. So let's start at uh, the beginning, I guess, in a way. It's the oldest song that you wrote for this album. It's called Mercenary. It's sort of an ending and a beginning. Even though it was the oldest song, it was sort of finished after you'd already wrapped in the studio and you sent it to Matt Patton of Drive-By Truckers, who plays on the record. People who just heard me say that might think, Matt Patton, Drive-By Truckers, the kind of music they're known for might not uh, seem like it is that related to the kind of music that you're known for. So how did you and Matt end up working together? Well, I think the relationship is it's good music. That's you know, true. Matt okay. plays good music. <laughs> good I like point. to think I play good music, so there we aligned, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I mean, it was... Mercenary came together after the fact in that, like, it was the first song written of the batch, and it was a song that I had originally brought to Against Me in probably... 2018 or 2019 and just went over like a turd in a swimming pool like Why? people I, I don't know it was just what like sometimes that happens with bands like you bring a song to the band and it doesn't click right and you know at the time when I brought it to it like the structure was a little different and like some of the lyrics were different and I just kept refining and kept refining and like really it was the chorus that I kept like just like trying to get to a place where I felt good about it and then it finally clicked and I, I I really do believe like oftentimes yeah first instinct you get into a studio first take you know like that that's going to be the one right sometimes and like if you're feeling it like you want it to hit immediately like I crave immediacy right but sometimes like it does behoove you to spend time on a song and to like kind of like I don't know cut it from stone yeah well let's take a listen to the live version of Mercenary this is Laura Jane Grace on World Cafe Jane Grace with Mercenary from her new album, Hole in My Head, recorded live for the World Cafe. Laura Jane Grace is my guest today. I'm Raina Duris. So you've got that more uh, kind of roots rock leaning song on the album, but you also kept your punk roots. And I want to talk about Wait, the song. which is the roots rock leaning roots song? Roots rock and then punk roots. Oh, well, it's kind of, <laughs> I think Mercenary has like that Matt Patton, Drive By Truckers sort of feel. You can you can feel it, especially once you know the story behind the song a little bit. And someone, I heard someone describe it as Southern Gothic, and I was like, oh, that's hey, cool. I that, that sounds cooler. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll say that. <laughs> Southern Gothic. Um, but I do want to talk about the song punk rock in basements. Cool. Um, what had you looking back at basement shows with such fondness? Um, 
Well, I don't know. I, you know, I've always like seen a certain amount of irony in being an artist that's so heavily associated with playing basement shows. And like, I've played a ton of basement shows, but my band started in Florida and there aren't basements in Florida because the water Good level's point. too high, right? So we were a band that like, we played a lot of garages when we were first starting out, but then we became known as a basement punk band, right? So that's always been kind of funny, but, um, I don't know, like that song kind of like came really easily and without much thought, but I just like, like coming out of the pandemic specifically, like the idea of like being in like enclosed spaces with lots of people seemed kind of perverse, right? Mm. Like breathing people's breath and it's feeling like spit on you. Yeah. No windows, totally. no airflow at and all. And there were shows like that back in the day where I remember where it was just like, you know, like just like everyone is covered in sweat and it's bodies on bodies, you know? And the idea of that after a year and a half of the pandemic seemed just like insane, right? Um, but I craved it, I missed it. And I don't know, like, at the time, I was kind of listening to stuff like like Dion and like The Wanderer or Run Around Sue and like the idea of like people like singing in a circle, like something about that, like I just kind of gravitated to. And um, I don't know, that song came from it. Yeah, there's the line, um, see the past appearing, don't it make you wonder if you're coming or you're leaving? See the past repeating, don't it make you wonder if you're following or leading? And I really felt like that's uh, kind of relatable for a lot like anybody whether you're uh, in a music scene or whatever as you're getting older starting to look back on those things could you talk about that yeah I, I think that like really that like that it's not really a proper chorus right but it is kind of the chorus of the song but it's definitely the actual meaning of the song and like you know every generation that comes up thinks they're like reinventing the wheel and as you get older, sometimes that can be a little intimidating because you look at the, like, the younger kids who are doing it and you're like, oh, I'm old, maybe I'm out of touch or something like that. But like, you'll have those moments where you're like, you aren't doing anything different. Like, you know, like I did this before <laughs> too. Like you may think you are, but you're not. It's all been done before, right? Yeah. And I think it's important to remember that. Yeah. You know? Here's Punk Rock and Basements on World Cafe. Punk Rock and Basements, Punk Rock and Basements. That's where we made it. That's where we used to bear our heart and soul. Oh, oh. Never hear the microphone, but we knew every single word. Way, way loud. See the past appearing, gonna make you wonder if you're coming or you're leaving. Way, way loud. See the past repeating, gonna make you wonder if you're following or leading. Yeah, we were loud in the crowd. We were Laura Jane Grace, Punk Rock in Basements. That's from the album Hole in My Head. It's a new album. Hole in My Head, the title, yeah. also the title of the opening track. You sing, I Need a Hole in My Head. That phrase came from something that your kid said to you a while back that really stuck with you. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'll go ahead and talk about it, even though it makes me highly uncomfortable. In 2018, I had a surgery where they cut the back of my head open and peeled my face off. And then they like cut out the center of my forehead, bone cemented it back in and put a piece of metal over there. Right. And when I was explaining to my daughter what I was going through, uh, they were like, so you want a hole in your head? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I guess I do. And they're like, well, that's what you get. You get a hole in your head. So it kind of haunts me to this day. Yeah. Uh, but that's where the title came from. It kind of stuck with me when you're when you're uh, when your young kid is trying to understand why you're going through something. And uh, they kind of pointed out plainly to you what you're actually doing is putting a, a hole in your head. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think when I first heard the term hole in your head, hole in my head, uh, there are two things I thought of. I thought of a uh, Trepanning, which yeah, trepanation, yeah, trepanation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. where they would literally like drill a hole or move part of your head, become through. permanently high. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, yeah it was, it's an ancient surgical technique. One of have the oldest. Have you read borehole? I, I have not. There's this memoir by this I forget the person's name, but it's called Borehole, and it's a memoir of a guy who did self trepanation, right? And they lived obviously because they wrote the memoir, but they were like one of the first psychedelic enthusiasts enthusiasts in Ibiza, and uh, like yeah. They wanted to become permanently high, so they drilled a hole in their head. Did they, did it work? I think so, yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, the memoir says so. Yeah. Okay, I wrote down borehole, <laughs> I'm going to read that. Uh, that's my next thing on my reading list. Uh, the other thing I thought of is the phrase, oh, I need that, like I need a hole in my head. Sure, yeah, um, yeah. In your case, it wasn't because of something that you didn't want, it was because of something you did want, facial feminization surgery. Um, you sing in this song, th there's this line where you say like, 
you can try to outrun all the pain you come from. That would be a real mistake. You could learn to feel less. That would be a real bore. Now I'm wondering, is bore wordplay on that bore? Oh, that does <laughs> work, doesn't it? That was subconscious, <laughs> but I'll take it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You, you, seeing about how you could outrun these things that hurt or these the pain that you feel, you ultimately seem in the lyrics to decide not to do that. Mm -hmm. Why is it important to you to keep those feelings with you? Um, because they make you who you are, yeah. right? You know, and like, I don't know, sometimes you can compromise yourself for other people, right? But that doesn't ever really work. So like, I think it's important to just be who you are ultimately and to have self-acceptance even if that means accepting that there are things that are flawed about you. Mm -hmm. Live for the World Cafe. This is Hole in My Head from Laura Jane Grace. On World Cafe, Laura Jane Grace with the title track to her new album, Hole in My Head. She performed that live for the show. She's here with me today. I'm Raina Duris. Uh, staying on the topic, I guess, of your head. <laughs> <laughs> what a transition. You got your head tattooed in 2022. Yes. And since it's radio and people can't see you, uh, if they haven't seen you before, I should say you have many, many tattoos. What was the first one you ever got? My remember? first tattoo ever was a stick and poke tattoo of a crass logo on my ankle here. Aww. But it's been covered up and then covered up and then covered up and covered up again. So, <laughs> What is it right now? What's it currently? All black. Okay. I just have completely blacked out got it. legs. So, yeah. <laughs> um, the tattoo that you got on your head a couple of years ago is, is the final one in a series of tattoos you've gotten over the last decade or so uh, from a master Japanese tattoo artist named Gakin. Could you tell us about Gekin and his work? Sure, yeah. So um, I had like a suicidal nervous breakdown in 2013 and uh, moved to Chicago. And um, at the time, like I needed something to focus on besides music, right? So I was like, I'll focus on getting tattooed. And um, the idea of being hurt brutally by somebody seemed appealing. So I uh, found this tattoo studio in Logan Square called Butterfat. And there was these two Japanese artists that are doing guest spots there. One of them was named Kenji Alucky. So I booked time with Kenji and went in to get my feet tattooed. And uh, while I was getting the first one done, Gakin was there as well. So met them and uh, Kenji and Gakin like knew each other from Japan. Um, but really weren't like friends yet or whatever. Um, and so over like three days, uh, Kenji finished my feet. And then I was like, well, I wanna get tattooed by Kakin as well. So I booked time with Kakin, but went to Kyoto for that. Um, and then like, we just like kind of like got along together and like hit it off. And I wanted them to tattoo my whole body. So I really wanted like to do the traditional bodysuit. Um, and we started on that and uh, we just would every couple months get together wherever in the world made sense. I went over to Japan probably like seven, eight times, uh, tattooed in LA, tattooed in San Francisco, tattooed in Amsterdam and Berlin, and then um, New York. Um, and sometimes it was, you know, like one-on-one -on -one with Kenji or Gekin, and other times it was both of them tattooing me at the same time. Um, 
And then the last step of it was my head, like literally started at my feet and worked all the way up. Um, when you say traditional bodysuit, what does that mean? Like a completely connected bodysuit. Okay. So like from my feet, the tattoos do not stop until the top of my oh. head. Like the, yeah, I, 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 I've ultimately like I failed the test is like kind of how I feel about it. Cause you can see on my knee where I was like, nope, I'm done. I can't anymore. <laughs> um, That's like, <laughs> it's amazing that after all that, there was actually a spot where you're like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah, and it wasn't the pain either. That like They put the numbing cream on me and something about the way it felt on my knee specifically in the spot where like you do the reflex thing and your leg will kick out. It just felt so weird not being able to feel the pain, but being able to feel inside of my knee moving it's around. It's almost worse. Yeah, and I, I, like, I, I couldn't sit still for it. Yeah. And um, so I, I kind of remain unfinished in that way, but I still wanted to get my head tattooed. So um, I was over in Europe doing a tour and got was tattooing in Amsterdam and so I hit them up and I was like hey will you, will you do my head like will you tattoo my head like we planned and uh, he had time so I went there and I shaved my head and he tattooed me for a couple days and at the end of the session he gave me a guitar and it was a guitar that he had hand painted all these like beautiful swirling designs all over it and um, I don't know for me it was like a real like it was significant in that it felt like uh, and this is the end yeah here is a gift this is the end our paths are going to go different directions now. Um, and uh, yeah, I immediately took the guitar back to my hotel room and I wrote the song Birds Talk Too. And a lot of the song is just descriptives of Amsterdam, impressionistic descriptives, like uh, only planes flying out of Schiphol are yeah. higher than I am. Schiphol is the airport in um, in Amsterdam. Uh, they're out of Champagne Haze at Rookies. Rookies is my favorite little cafe there, and Champagne Haze is my favorite strain. Um, Vondel Park is like my favorite park in the world, and just going there and sitting with your 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 feet or with your shoes off in the grass. Like the original lyric was "Go outside and ground myself, not right. go outside and find myself." So, like you know, sometimes it's important to just go outside and ground yourself. Take off your feet or take off your so socks and shoes and put them in the grass. You know, yeah. your feet in the grass. Um, but I was like literally going down the elevator in the hotel and George Harrison's I got my mind set on you was playing and um, Yeah Let's go back for one second. I can't see your tattoo on your head. Really. I can sort of see a bit of it that, right that now That should have been the part you also added in for people since it was radio <laughs> like and for those listening You also can't see you the can't tattoos see on my it. head anyways because I have hair again your but hair yeah. has grown back <laughs> um, Could you tell us? what it looks like? Yeah um, it, it, it was kind of funny the way it worked out actually because I, I like I like having birds tattooed on me. Like I like crows and ravens and stuff, right? Why so, do you think you like having birds tattooed on you? I don't know, put a bird on it, right? Um, <laughs> no, um, I, I, it's just something I knew I wanted from like a very young age, right? Um, and I also, one of the reasons I really like Akeen and Kenji is because like, you know, there's a language barrier definitely there. Like Kenji spoke very little English. Um, so like, just going to them and putting your trust in them of like tattoo, whatever. But um, when I went to see Gakin about my head, he was like, okay, well, what do you want to do? Do you have any ideas like of specific bird positionings and stuff? And I had a picture of a dead bird on my phone that I had just taken on the street. So I showed him that and he drew the same exact bird on my head. Cause he does everything freestyle. It's not like a stencil that he puts on. He oh, just really? like draws it on you and then tattoos it. Um, oh. And so I have a picture or I have a tattoo of a dead bird on, on top of my head that I saw on a sidewalk. And so the guitar, that he gave you, you know, you wrote the song on it. Does that happen to you often where a particular piece of gear or, or guitar will kind of like give you a song? A hundred percent. And I believe strongly in that, like being a thing where like, I think guitars have souls a hundred percent. Right. And I think sometimes like, you know, like the energy between you and an instrument won't be right. Maybe you're not getting along or something like that, right? But maybe like it'll come around or maybe it'll like, like for instance, I have the the Rickenbacker that I played for this session and I haven't played that, that guitar on a couple tours and only on a whim did I bring it out for like practice or whatever uh, for this tour. But it was clear to me when I started playing it, I was like, oh, this guitar wants to go on this tour. It's like being extra in tune for me. And it's like cooperating. Whereas a couple months ago, I'd maybe tried to play it and it wasn't, you know? But I think that some song, like some guitars have songs in them that you yeah. wouldn't get out of another guitar that it just like resonates with you a certain way. Oh, I love that so much. Well, we're gonna hear Birds Talk too. Is there anything else that you'd like to say about it before we hear it? Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> this is Birds Talk too, live for the World Cafe. It's Laura Jane Grace.
birds talk to Laura Jane Grace performing live for the World Cafe. I am going to finish things off. You played a, an extra song for us today. Yeah. Against me's Baby, I'm an Anarchist, which was a surprise. We did not know you were going to do that today. Why did you choose to bring up Baby, I'm an Anarchist? Uh, well, I mean, first and foremost, because it was fun. Baby, I'm an Anarchist is a song that we've been playing in the set every night, and it's been really fun to sing it with Paris, so I thought it'd be cool to do it here. Even if you haven't heard this song before, I feel like you'll be singing along with it by the end of it. It's cool. that catchy. <laughs> Baby, I'm an anarchist. Laura Jane Grace on World Cafe. It was Baby, I'm an Anarchist from Laura Jane Grace playing an Against Me song. And Laura Jane Grace has been my guest today on the show. New album is called Hole in My Head. Laura Jane Grace, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Never a chore. Through the best of time.